Where did the carrier say he got his deer? I didn't see him, but the men in the store said... I'm Kelsey, that's Tim, and this is our rolling home Dusty. We hit the road full time a few years ago to follow our dreams of driving around the world, and we headed south. We did it. COVID brought us back to the States, but there is plenty of adventure to be had here while we wait out the pandemic. So come along and enjoy this crazy ride we call life. Well, good morning. Today, you join us along the Dalton Highway. We made our way out here yesterday and spent a quiet night among the fall colors, which was exactly what we needed because, well, <laughs> yesterday felt a little long. Some days, you just don't feel quite the stoke that you do on other days, and today was kind of like that. But after a beautiful sunset, some warm food, and a good night's sleep, we woke up refreshed to a calm, cloudy day, and we couldn't wait to see what the Dalton Highway had in store. So as you already know, this is the Dalton Highway. Its official full name is the James W. Dalton Highway, sometimes called Alaska Route 11 or the North Slope Hall Road. It is 415 miles long, and only 25% of those 415 miles are paved. The rest is dirt, and it can get pretty muddy. The route takes you from 225 miles north of Fairbanks, all the way up to the town of Dead Horse, near the Arctic Ocean. The Dalton Highway is one of America's most remote roads. It was created in 1974 for the building of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, which you might spot off the side of the road in the video. Today, it still serves as a way to service the pipeline, but it's also a crucial supply road for the oil fields up near Dead Horse. In fact, trucks are the main traffic on this road. Year-round, 3,700 trucks a month drive this road. Some other fun facts, the whole road is built on permafrost, and the coldest temperature in the U.S. was recorded up here, just north of the Arctic Circle. Yep, back in January 1971, it got to minus 80 degrees. Pretty crazy. Best of all for us is there was even a spot to fill up our water tanks with fresh water. Just a little hose. Gotta have Kelsey do the heavy lifting, you know? Seventy-six percent. It's pretty accurate with how it goes up when yeah. I watch it. When we're doing the whole it's the coldest hand to run down this land where the ocean lands. It's the tallest sound, the damn smallest crowd, but their hearts break loud. We are officially above the Arctic Circle. Woohoo! It's like we're driving through different seasons. The trees yeah. just keep changing. Like we're in fall now. Yeah, like down in Fairbanks, nothing had really changed colors yet. Yeah. Certainly down in uh, Haynes Junction, everything hadn't changed color yet. But then up here, it's, you know, everything's yellow and changing and yeah. orange. 
really Show pretty. Sometimes the views at our front windshield just blow my mind. And this was one of those views. It was just so beautiful it seemed fake, like a painting rising up in front of us, minus the bugs on the windshield. Even watching it back, it's hard to comprehend how pretty it was. Can you believe that's real? trees and a lot of snow coming up. Starting to look a lot more Arctic. Arctic y. Polary. Muskoxy. Making up a lot of new words you here. Wanna, today. You wanna know what I musk see? <laughs> Muskox. I musk see it. Get it? We crawled up and over Adigan Pass, and on the other side, we found fog. And all I could think was that my hopes of seeing a muskox were now looking pretty slim. Lucky for us, just as quickly as the fog had arrived, it cleared. And again, we were treated to some incredible Arctic tundra views. Now with the new addition of caribou. And then, suddenly, out of nowhere, there he was on the side of the road, my muskox. My trip up the Dalton was now complete. I saw the muskox on the side of the road, just for me, really close up. Pretty excited about that. tracks that somebody must have crashed and gone off the road and then you can see where a tow truck or something just drag, drag it out of this nasty slight swamp mud so it's a weird terrain but yeah and the weather's changed yeah it is very cold now and very windy yeah and you can smell the beach which is kind of weird because it seems like it shouldn't be the yeah. ocean here but uh yeah there's a lot of uh geese and some swans some Caribou. ducks we've seen a lot of caribou and one muskox. One lucky muskox. That made me very, very happy. Uh, so I'm not sure where we're going to camp tonight. I think we will 
be using the heater tonight because it has gotten a lot colder up here. But we're almost there, I hope. Hopefully the road stays nice like this. Tim's doing all the hard work of driving. I just get to sit and look out the window. <laughs> are at the top of the world yep. and it is freezing it's and freezing pretty cold. inhospitable here and it's still summer well kind of september yeah. 2nd today i can't imagine september what it's like 2nd i can't fathom what it's like in winter he said it's 36 degrees right now um so it that means tonight's gonna be well under so freezing windy. and then the wind chill factor yeah so it's gonna be quite cold. I think this is a place where no one would ever choose to live. But no. people are here because it makes money and there's jobs. Yep. But like, there's nothing. There's one little store, mm -hmm. and but it's purely just function. This town is function. We've had several friends work up here, uh, right, driving this road. One of them uh, from Fairbanks to here and back again and again. And then another one coming up here to work on trucks and in one of these big warehouses where you're basically living inside this little capsule for I think he would do six months at a time. Um, but they got paid really, really well. It's just such an interesting place. I cannot believe the volume of yeah. vehicles, buildings. I mean, it is just It's massive. really interesting to see. Like, it's a really interesting drive. Yeah. It's a long drive. Yeah. And this is not a place that you want to hang out really at all. Nor well, is no, there a place to hang out really. And the last 50 miles are basically a swampy wetland um, and it's sort of the desolate region as you get into the oil fields yeah. and closer to the ocean. So. They're really cool. This is Dead Horse, the end of the road for us and the beginning of the 800 mile long pipeline. It's a working town, in case you couldn't tell. It services the oil fields of Prudhoe Bay and although it only has somewhere between 25 to 50 permanent residents, there are anywhere from two to 3,000 employees aka temporary residents. The whole town is on an arctic tundra, so the ground is permafrost, which means all the buildings need to be insulated so as not to melt the permafrost and sink. So they're all either on large gravel pads or up on stilts. Well, that's it. We just did a like U-turn 50 yards behind me at the security gate in Dead Horse, Alaska, next to Prudhoe Bay. We can't drive any further north. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy town. Like, I think yeah. we were just talking, I think it's the closest thing I've ever experienced to, like, what a boom town would be like, where it's it's just all working, like, nothing. But I think it's the quantity, like, look right yeah. there. That's Halliburton, one of the Halliburton yards. And I'm looking at bigger tanker trucks than I've ever seen, and they're bright red and they're all looking brand new and there's 200 of them sitting right there yeah i mean it's just the money the money is so, so mind-blowing so much out here but it none yeah. of it it's all industrial none of it is like i mean there's a couple hotels i think yeah. but not even like what you would picture a hotel being yeah uh, it's all super industrial and the quantity of buildings the quantity of companies the quantity of employees of trucks of yeah. heavy equipment is probably 10 times what i pictured and i I know this is a massive, the U.S.'s biggest oil reserve, and it's a massive operation, but I pictured thousands of trucks and people, Yeah. but it's like each company has thousands. And uh, it's all built on like wetlands, so yeah. it's all just like on, on top stilts, of gravel or, or on stilts. It's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away at the size of it all, and you just we're just driving roads, and we haven't even seen all of it yet, and it's just operation after operation. Yeah where we just turned around was the security gate so to go any further you need to be actually working um but it's just amazing like the amount of equipment sitting in each each company's yard 
staggers the mind, I yeah. think. Um, and it's gray and it's cold. Yep. There's not a restaurant or a bar that I've seen in town. I think there is there a restaurant is, yeah. and, and a hotel and stuff, but I just mean this town is purely about work. Yeah, pretty crazy. Yep. Nothing I can compare it to. No. a few gallons of diesel which is funny because we shouldn't have there we have so much left but it's like instinct and I think at mm -hmm. six dollars a gallon I wanted to buy a couple gallons mm -hmm. so but essentially we will have done yeah Fairbanks to here back with a detour to Manly Hot Springs and to that yeah. um, the uh, what's it called not barge oh yeah the um, dredge dredge yeah which we didn't get to see because it was on private property yep we drove around in awe of this strange place we took every road we were allowed, just looking at everything. Hey guys, Kelsey from the future here, and as I'm editing this video, I just wanted to note that although it may seem like we're not as excited as we should be, I think it's just that we're really, really tired. It was a super long day of driving, and I'm not sure how to describe it, but I think Dead Horse was overwhelming. Like, the weather was overwhelming. It was the coldest I think I've ever been stepping outside there. It was freaking freezing. And it was just a lot to take in. It was so industrial. We had been like out in the middle of nowhere for so long and then suddenly to come into this town that was so foreign from anything else I've ever seen. I think we were both just tired and overwhelmed. So I didn't want you to get the wrong idea as I was watching this that we weren't super excited that we had made it up there and it was beautiful in its own very cold sort of way um but yeah i just thought i would interject that as i'm editing this that was my thought so anyways we were super excited to be there just tired and cold and that's all i have to say for now <laughs> yeah we definitely are glad to have the heater going and going well i think we'll definitely use the wabasto tonight when we sleep mm -hmm. and we'll sleep downstairs for sure no just because of the, the, top the wind it's crazy strong but I think what we're gonna do now, it's 7 p.m. and I'm still feeling pretty good. I'm pretty exhausted, but I think it's worth putting it's in 45 easy minutes to head. In these roads. No, but it's worth putting in a little time to just get off of this front edge of sort of the wind, or if this is a storm moving in, or what. Yeah. Um, yeah. We but did we did it. it. I can't believe that. I know it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It is cool. We put our sticker there, so if you're ever here, you can look for 
Sticker of Dusty. And the we put the sticker, basically there's nothing that says end of the Dalton Highway, except at the auto parts store, there's a big rusty sign that says like, you did it, end, end of the, the Dalton world Highway. Yeah, end of the world. So we did it. Uh, wow. Yeah, that was a long day of driving. You have like killed it with driving. That's ex exhausting. I love this truck. It's amazing. Me too. It's so nice to feel like we have a safe, cozy, warm yep. place to be tonight, even in this crazy weather. Yep. Yeah. So, shall we? Yep. Maybe we'll see more muskox. Okay, goodbye. Well, the Dalton did not disappoint. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and catch up with us next week as we make our way back on the Dalton Highway. We catch some magic on the way back, too. We'll see you then.